How many times do you get lied to per day on your average daily interaction with people? How can you detect those lies so you can stay ahead of the game? Can you learn some tactics from me that you can use in every single situation? I'm Dr. Joe Isaac, and I'm going to teach you exactly that. All the tactics that the CIA, FBI use when they don't have a lying detecting device around. Coming up. Welcome back to creating your own new limitless world. And for those who are meeting me for the first time, I'm Dr. Joe Isaac, and I'm very passionate about helping others feel great and inspired. I truly believe that everyone should have an opportunity for free education, especially for those who don't have the financial means of learning. I don't run ads on this channel, neither do I want any financial gain from it. You can check my bio in the video description if you want to know more about my purpose. So feel free to engage with me here by subscribing to the channel and activating the bell notification button so YouTube spreads the video to the right people. Many people lie, but not everybody. Depending on the country that you live in, you could range on an average between 19 times to 120 times per day. Now that's a large number and I'm not classifying any types of lies. They're all lies, small or little, white or gray. By the end of this video, you will be able to predict what others are thinking in real time. This video is like no other. It will certainly give you an edge to be ahead of the people and always prepared for what's coming next. Two, get full guide on lying detection, not bits and pieces. This is complete full guide. Three, manage your reactions in any situation in real time. Picture yourself, for example, in an interview and you've asked, you've been asked a question, you're not sure how to respond or you gave a response and you're not sure if you complete in that road or drift somewhere else. By learning those tactics, you will be able to rectify that on the spot and in there. Four, if you have doubts about your partner that they're not completely transparent, learning those tactics will help you figure out what is exactly going on. Simply, you can use those tactics in many situations. The most important part though, is that you analyze exactly and figure out what type of person you're dealing with in analyzing. So you don't become like those people who read one book or attend a session or two and think that they are now experts on human behavior analysis. Do you come across those people who pretend to know it all? Join the conversation in the comments below. So let's get into the tactics. And remember that those tactics are used by many law enforcement agencies. And what I trained in many agencies like CIA and FBI use those exact tactics, but they do take time to practice and master. So don't rush into it. I do suggest that you get ready to take notes or if you're not ready now maybe subscribe and save that video to watch for later when you're really ready to concentrate and take it all as one shot that is extremely important for you to get the full picture of it i will focus on the common three with their signs and typical behavior so you can classify and categorize what type of person that person is then how to apply this to read people in any situation towards the end i will do a full demonstration in three steps for you so you can capture practically what does it look like when you are analyzing someone. The first type, the visuals. And from the name, you can detect that these people rely on imagery. They rely on visuals, how to analyze and interpret and understand the information. That doesn't mean that the visuals cannot hear or feel. They can, but it means that they're most powerful part of the brain concentrates and works best by processing information into images in forms of pictures. Some of the signs for the language patterns that the visuals use, you will hear often common statements such as, this is a bright idea. I can see what you mean. Oh, I can picture how that will look like in the future. Behaviors. Number one, they often maintain very, very strong eye contact. You can often see them attracted to colors, highlighters. Colors is very important part to what they wear. They have high voice pitch that you can clearly hear. Now let's look at their eye movements through a conversation, for instance. If the conversation is going about the future, let's say they imagining something, a house to buy in the future, they often would look up and to the right. If the conversation is going in a track where they're trying to recall a memory, something from the past, they'll often look up and to the left. If they are engaged in a conversation and they're trying to process the information that is currently on stake, they will seem unfocused, gaze and look everywhere. 
trying to convert whatever you're saying into pictures. So that's the visual group. If you are visual yourself, can you share with us extra tips that can help us spot those visuals in the comments below? Second type, they are called the auditories. And these people process information in a sound wise format more than any other form. Again, keep in mind that those people can see and can hear and can feel and everything, but their main power is to transferring that information into sound formats. Some of the language patterns that the auditory type of people use, you'll hear statements such as, I hear what you mean. That sounds like music to my ears. What can you tell me about this? Behaviors associated with them one, they often have less eye contact. Two, they tend to expose their ears a little bit towards the source of the voice or the source of the sound. And one of the most amazing things about them is that they have very soft voice and they love to sound great and tend to at times close their eyes when they're struggling to refocus their powers. What about their eye movements through a conversation? If they are thinking about the future, you will tend to see their eyes drift towards the right, but it's kind of on an even level, it's not up. And if they are thinking about the past, trying to recall a memory, they will be thinking on the same kind of eye level, but more towards the left. If they're trying to process information that you're saying at the minute, they often look towards the left a little bit down when they are synthesizing or converting those words and whatever is coming to them into sounds. And even you can find them commonly closing their eyes when the environment is a bit noisy and trying to recollect their thoughts. So that's the auditory group. If you are auditory and you know that about yourself, can you give us an extra tip in the comments how we can spot that particular type very quickly? I will throw in a couple of tips at the end of the video as well about them, so keep an eye out for that one. The third type, and they are the kinesthetics, and from their name, they are full of energy. That type of people process information in forms of feelings more than anything else. Again, it doesn't mean that they can't hear or see, but their brain power focuses into converting all the information into feelings. Common signs with their language patterns. You often hear statements like, I feel exactly what you're going through. I will touch base with you. Let me get a feel of that. Common behaviors. They seem to have a lot of energy going on most of the time. They tend to get fidgety and have a lot of energy. You can see their legs even sometimes shake if they're sitting in a class or a lecture. They fiddle with pens. These are common behaviors that the kinesthetics have. Eye movements through a conversation is quite interesting because they do look very focused gaze on the source, almost as if they are ready to physically go ahead to that source. When they are trying to process information that is happening right now, they often look down and to the right when they are converting information into feelings with a physical movement with it, something very, very strong that you can feel and sometimes you can see. They have more pauses than others when they are talking. So that's the kinesthetic group. If you're kinesthetic yourself, what else can you tell us to help us spot your type. Now that we have discussed the three groups with their language pattern signs and behaviors, I want you to understand that sometimes other types can share certain things, but you want to look at a dominance of pattern of behavior. So don't look at say, ah, oh, Joe just said, this person said that sentence, that means they are that type. You gotta look at common use of that sentence. That's how you detect what kind of person that is. On top of this, what do you think you are. Let me know in the comments. If you're not certain, I will put a link in the description below the video that you can go and do a test and you can get what type of person you are. It's time for you to practice what we have learned in that video. So I'll do a demonstration for you. Let's say that you've arrived at a decision that the person in front of you is a visual type. Ask them a question to take them to the past. Something like, tell me about the most memorable opportunity or time that you spent with family around Christmas time or any appropriate question. The idea here is to take this person to the past so you can listen to what they're going to say and you can also observe their eye movements and behaviors. Following this by a few other questions, all past related and see if you can get an average of response as a reference point. So they're always looking that way. They're always saying this, which is all truthful. Then move to the future and ask future related questions, such as what kind of car do you think you'll be buying in 2040? Um, what's your you know dream house look like in this year? And make sure that you observe very, very, very closely to observe the signs, 
on their behaviors, eyes, movements, and the words to get consistency and take it as a reference point. Then ask them a question that initiates thoughts, let's say a controversial topic, so you can start to analyze their behaviors, ask few questions that they are currently thinking about right now. What is their eyes doing? What's their body doing? What's their statements that is coming out in that conversation sounding like? and analyze all that and make sure that you take it as a reference. Once you have a dominance of a behavior that you classify that this person is visual and you've asked quite a few questions and you see mismatches between their eye movements, between the statements, then you have a very strong indication here to investigate further and most probably this person is not telling the truth. So where do you go from here? The first thing is practice and practice will make it perfect. And I'll say start with friends and family, start analyzing them, looking at their common signs, behaviors, eye movements, language patterns, and then come up to a result and then go and check with them. Tell them that if they agree or disagree. Start applying on people that you've just met as well. That's a very good opportunity for you to practice in a social setting. And once you've confirmed your thoughts about that person, start taking them past, future, and controversial topics and see if they match the behaviors of their group. At least you can start with me. Can you guess what type of person I am from the three groups, I would love to read it in the comments below. What are your tips on reading others? So share with me in the comments. Let us learn from each other. If you have enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments below and like the video and subscribe to the channel. They say sharing is caring, so share it with friends and like-minded people, but not the people you're trying to analyze at the minute, maybe later on. Let us continue to build the world together with no limits. Thank you for watching. I will see you on the next video.